Good evening all and welcome. A happy new year to each and every one of you. We're starting the year off strong with some scary ghost stories. So buckle up because it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. My dad bought a house in 1965 for what he said was a steal at the time. It was built around the 1920s and was huge around 4,200 square feet in the West Hills, with an amazing view right below the Pittock Mansion. He never knew why it was so cheap, but didn't ask too many questions. The house was great, except that the basement would flood in the winter with rainwater. His first marriage ended in the early 70s, and he remained single for a few years. During this time, he claims the FBI came to the house and asked him some questions about the basement. He told me they said a woman was found in the garage just before he bought it, and they assumed that she'd taken her own life, and he thought that must be why the house was so cheap. He told them it was empty when he moved in. He let them in and they searched the basement, and he recalls they wouldn't tell him much, but the neighbors told him that the previous owners were involved in mischief, with lots of parties, fancy cars coming in and out at all hours, and they would hang out at Henry Thiel's, a local restaurant, but more about that in a moment. He married my mother in 1974, having me and my brother. In high school, I remember some men coming and saying something about Henry Thiel's being torn down, and they wanted to look in the basement. They said they were the FBI. My parents let them in and explained it had been remodeled to fix the water issue. I left to go somewhere and don't know what else they spoke about and didn't think much of it until years later. As I was growing up, my dad's four other kids who are much older than me moved out while I was very little, college, etc. His two boys sometimes stayed with us in the summer, the girls did not. Mum and I always assumed the girls didn't like us. In the 80s, when I was around 10, my mum started having dreams about a shadowy male creature that would hover over her at night. She would wake up and it would still be there. She'd scream, fight, swing at it, and it wouldn't go away until Dad woke up. She would crawl to the foot of the bed, and it would follow her, keeping its face to hers and disappear only when Dad sat up. Side note, the floor plan of the house was very interesting, with a master wing, a single door that led to a hallway with separate rooms, a bathroom and a bedroom, and a small hallway that could be locked as well as each of the three rooms, the garage shared a wall along the master bedroom. A windowless attic above the garage shared a wall with the two upstairs bedrooms. My parents discovered that if the door leading to the hallway was locked, and the master bedroom at the end of the hallway was locked, she would not have this dream. My dad tested this on occasion, sometimes purposefully, and sometimes accidentally. They both swear 100% of the time, if just one door was left unlocked at any time before the morning, she would have the experience. It had to remain locked when someone left the room, or opened very briefly to go down the short hallway to the bathroom at night, being locked behind them as they left with a key. The key could not remain in the door lock, and yes, of course, they were old-fashioned styled skeletal keys. My extremely pacifist father also began keeping an axe under his side of the bed. Through the 80s, my mum went back to work and hired a living nanny, who happened to be a woman. They would never work for us long. Their reasons were always vague, but they would always complain about the creepy house. We assumed they were being nice, as my brother was special needs, and care was extremely challenging and assumed they didn't want to say mean things about him. When I was a teenager, with this habit well established of locking doors, my aunt came to stay with us after having surgery. One morning she apologized to my mum about how she must have woken up the entire house. She recounted the exact same experience. She awoke to a dark figure that she was absolutely sure was male, hovering above her. It remained there, 
and didn't leave until she was exhausted from screaming. The guest room she stayed in boarded the garage. She had the experience every night until she left and never returned. As adults, my sisters and I became friends. Years ago, with me in my 30s and one of my sisters in her 40s, were having drinks talking about the good old days, and I told her about the experience, as it had been shared with me over the years by women on my mum's side. I'll never forget her face. She kept looking at her husband and back at me, while I had told her what I heard. When I was done, with a very pale face, she recounted her own stories. She told me how her mum had the exact same experience and others. Her mum used to put tape under the chairs in the dining room at night with numbers written on them. She would check the chairs and find them out of order. She would reorganise them and find them moved the next day. The chairs were not scattered, just reorganised but still tucked in. Children didn't play in the dining room and claimed to have never moved the chairs. My sister told me of her own Shadow Man story. She and her sister had the exact same experience. Her husband couldn't believe it either, as she had told him, and it was why they would never visit Dad or stay at the house until he retired or moved. Her husband always assumed it was just some teenage nightmares and nonsense. The bedroom the sisters shared bordered the upstairs attic part of the garage. A small, almost half door led from the attic over the garage into their bathroom. The bathroom had two doors, one to the hallway and one to the nanny slash guest bedroom, and another to the sister's bedroom. If the bathroom door or bedroom door were left unlocked, they would see the shadow man. A few years back, my wife and I were in Portland and decided to go by the old house. I knocked on the door, and the owner answered and was nice enough to let us in. They had remodelled and she very nicely toured us through the entire house and they'd done a lot of work. She seemed to enjoy showing it off. Eventually we went upstairs, and the small attic door to the garage was gone. A solid wall was in its place. I tapped the wall and asked, How do you get to the attic? The woman looked at me confused. I told her, There's a hallway behind this wall. It goes over the master bedroom and into the attic and into the garage. The room is a good 20 by 30 feet, you can't miss it. She insisted there was no room. I assured her there was, and told her how my brother and I would play in there and keep our Christmas stuff, old clothes and furniture. She got very skittish, and then told us she needed to get going and so we'd have to go. We hurried out, but she was very polite, but clearly didn't want to keep talking. When we left, I looked up, and you could see the hallway leading to the garage was still there. The siding of the house was clearly laid out for a hallway, and a large room connected to the garage. It was easily 600 to 700 square feet of hall and attic they walled off, and I can only assume to end the experience with the Shadow Man. I'd really like to go back and see if anyone else has had any weird experiences. I would say I don't believe in ghosts, but I believe there is something very strange in that house. I looked on Zillow and it changed hands again. I wonder if anyone will discover and reopen the attic once more. I'm a 20 year old female, but when this happened to me, I was 16. It still gives me chills when I think about it. At the time I had been living in a very rural part of Tennessee, going to high school in one of the smallest towns in the state. This was one of those very old fashioned small Baptist Christian towns where everyone knows everyone when I say it was old-fashioned, I mean the church on every corner, the cemetery in the front lawn of the high school kind. Moving there after spending the first 15 years of my life in Evergreen, Colorado, was akin to travelling 40 years back in time. And in time, I grew to love the little town and all of the people I met and connected with. One of these people was a wonderful girl my age called Dee Dee. She and I became very close over that school year, and I would often spend time at her house, gossiping, eating snacks, watching horror movies, and just doing all of the things best friends do. I truly look back on our friendship fondly, and I miss her a lot. Before I tell you about what happened to me, I need to give you some context. 
I've always enjoyed collecting old things, and one of my favourite hobbies is poking around antique shops and collecting whichever pretty old things my goblin brain desires. One of my favourite things to collect are porcelain dolls. There is something so hauntingly beautiful about them. I have several around my apartment still, and even some in the room with me as I'm writing this now. Judge all you want. I love the way they look. Dee Dee's grandmother had passed down her own collection of beautiful porcelain dolls to her and her mother, and they kept these dolls in the closet of her mother's room. When I mentioned to Dee Dee that I collected porcelain dolls, she excitedly took me to the closet and showed me her grandmother's old treasures. There were two dolls in particular that really caught my eye. There was a doll with pretty blonde hair wearing a white and blue dress, and another doll with curly blonde hair in a frilly white dress, sitting in her own mini rocking chair. Later in our visit, Dee Dee and her mother told me stories about how the doll in the rocking chair was supposedly haunted, and that's why it was kept in the corner of the closet and out of sight. I thought this was interesting, but I'm not overly sensitive to the paranormal, so I didn't think much of it. I explained that people tend to think of porcelain dolls as haunted because of horror movies like Annabelle, and of course because of the uncanny valley effect. If you don't know what that is, it's basically that people feel uncomfortable when they look at something that appears almost human but not quite. That's why certain animation slash art styles will freak people out. Anyway, Dee Dee and her mother were quick to offer me the doll, saying that if I wasn't afraid and wanted to add it to my collection, that I was more than welcome. I was of course delighted and took the doll in the rocking chair home with me. They also gave me the other doll in the blue and white dress, simply because they weren't going to display her. Before I left Dee Dee's house, her mother told me that if I, for some reason, needed to get rid of the doll in the rocking chair, that I ought to bring it straight back to them, instead of throwing it away or destroying it. Because it was her grandmother's, and it did have sentimental value. I assured her that I would take good care of the doll, and when I arrived home, I placed both dolls proudly on my shelf of little knickknacks and other dolls I'd collected. Fast forward to that night, I'm suddenly awoken from a dead sleep, and my eyes lock with the dolls in the rocking chair. Wondering what had awoken me, I realise I'm neither able to move or speak, and for some reason I can't break eye contact with the doll in the rocking chair. I've experienced sleep paralysis before, it's pretty common in people with chronic anxiety, but never did I experience an auditory or visual hallucination. That being said, as I'm trapped, gazing into the eyes of the doll, I'm suddenly surrounded by what sounds like hundreds of children's echoing laughter. I lay there, unable to move for what felt like several minutes, while the sound of children's laughter echoed all around me. Finally, the laughter began to fade away, and when the sound finally died out, I was able to move and look away from the doll. I quickly sat up in bed, went over to the shelf, and turned the doll so that she was facing away from me, making a mental note to take the doll back to Dee Dee's house first thing in the morning. I told Dee Dee and her mother about my experience, and explained that I wanted them to have the doll back. Instead of being frightened, they simply gave me a bemused look, as if to say, we told you so. I once encountered a chilling presence in the form of a tall, shadowy figure. This unsettling episode took place a while ago, when I resided in a house that bore a dark history, where three individuals had met tragic ends within their walls, their bodies concealed in the attic and stored there for six years until the previous owner discovered them. Well, one night, as I lay in bed exhausted from a day of outdoor play, an eerie sensation crept over me. It felt as if something was watching me from the right corner of my room. Despite my fatigue, I drifted off to sleep. 
Later, in the deep darkness that signalled midnight, I awoke to an inexplicable terror that paralysed me. Struggling to move, I was overcome with an indescribable fear that was entirely new to me. As my eyes adjusted to the gloom, I discerned a towering figure, roughly seven feet tall, looming over me, adorned with a colossal top hat. The figure emanated an otherworldly aura. Panic surged, and my attempts to call for my parents proved futile. My voice seemed to have abandoned me, leaving only tears in its wake. The enigmatic being continued to stare, and bewilderingly vanished without a trace into the enveloping darkness. Upon regaining my ability to speak, I summoned my parents recounting the inexplicable encounter. However, they dismissed it as a mere nightmare, asserting that no one could have been inside the house. A decade passed, and at 16 we moved into a spacious home with expansive grounds, and despite its grandeur, a sense of foreboding lingered. One night after a gaming session I went to bed, where a disconcerting feeling gnawed at me, nestled in the recesses of my chest. Ignoring the unease, I closed my eyes only to be jolted awake by a whisper and deep breath coming from the corner of my room. Once again I found myself immobilized, as if I focused on the ominous presence. The same figure materialized, seven feet tall, sporting a distinctive hat. Closing my eyes tightly, I felt a weight descend upon my chest, accompanied by a fervent prayer for reprieve. Miraculously, the figure disappeared, leaving me shaken and compelled to keep the lights on throughout the night. When morning arrived, I confided in my father, who revealed he had sensed something amiss in my childhood, but refrained from telling me to not alarm me. The encounters persisted in my nightmares, occurring almost monthly, until our eventual relocation due to my parents' divorce. Remarkably, since that move, I have been spared from these haunting dreams. Sharing this unnerving experience serves as a testament that others may find solace knowing that they are not alone in facing this inexplicable phenomena. I lived in a house from the 1920s for a good number of years, and there was this peculiar shadowy figure we referred to as the Shadow Man. This mysterious presence would leisurely amble back and forth in our petite ten-foot hallway and would often linger at the doorways, just observing us silently. In the initial months, I brushed it off, attributing it to an overactive imagination, but things took a turn when we rearranged the living room and positioned the TV on the wall next to the hallway entrance. With the seating directly facing it, surprisingly, visitors began making comments about seeing the Shadow Man too. He possessed just the right amount of darkness to be imperceptible when your gaze was fixed on the television, subtly gliding into the entryway and quietly standing there. Yet, he wasn't so distinct that his presence was blatantly obvious. If you happened to direct your attention towards him and react, he would gradually retreat out of sight. Remarkably, everyone who encountered him described the same non-threatening demeanour, and it seemed as though he took pleasure in observing people going about their lives, and peculiarly, never ventured beyond the confines of that hallway. As a child of maybe four or five, I had to stay at my grandmother's flat a fair amount while my parents were getting divorced. Me and my sister had both seen a shadow figure at the end of her hallway, always just standing there by the bedroom at the end of the hall. I always thought it was my granddad as he passed away when I was three, but my sister had seen the same shadow figure at the end of the hall when my grandpa was alive, as she's eight years older than I am. My grandmother had a frosted glass door to the front of the room that we usually kept closed. You can see down the end of the hall, and a slightly bird view of a Spitfire airplane photo when the door is closed, and you can definitely make out a real person walking down the hallway, albeit blurry. 
but this shadow man would be standing there from time to time. We could all see him with the door closed, but as soon as the door was opened, he was gone. Always a cold spot down the end of the hallway too. One night in particular, I was staying over, and I had a feeling as if someone was watching me. My nan had put me to bed, and I felt eyes staring at me. I tried to brush it off, and I could feel and hear heavy breathing right behind me, like the hairs on my neck stood on end, and I could feel the breath on the back of my neck. I thought it was my nan coming to check on me, but I didn't hear the door open at all. I turned my head around expecting to see my nan, but no one was there. The door was closed, the breathing stopped in my ear, and I was honestly terrified and couldn't sleep at my grandma's after that. To this day, I still see the shadow man occasionally at the end of the hallway, and still feel the cold spot when I go past. I don't think he's meant to harm us at all this time, and the spirit, whether my granddad or something else, has never done anything malicious. But that moment solidified that ghosts and spirits exist, at least for me. I was raised outdoors, hiking, saltwater fly fishing, hunting, and I'm an Eagle Scout. This happened over 20 years ago in the panhandle of Florida. I had been working 12 hour night shifts for almost a year. I wasn't drunk or on anything else. I took my 67 Firebird convertible to an old car wash around 1.30 a.m. No other cars were there, and it was located on a main road, but being a medium-sized city, there wasn't much traffic at the time. I pulled the car into the vacuum machines, with the front facing the road, and the rear towards the open-ended car wash bay. I took out the floor mats, started the loud machine and began cleaning. Almost three quarters of the way through it, I was bent over half in, half out of the car, and I got the overwhelming feeling I was being watched. I leaned out of the car and stood up, and I was not expecting what I saw. It's hard to describe, behind me was one of the car wash bays, three of them connected together with cinder block walls between them, typical style setup. Hose on the side, no front or rear so that you can drive through. Around 20 foot ceilings, and on top of the ceiling had a large light which illuminates the stalls and projects out about 10 feet on either side of them. I had been using this car wash my whole life until I moved from the area. There was something there, not standing there, just floating. But it wasn't touching the ground, it seemed the shape was around seven feet tall, and at least two feet off the ground. This will sound insane, but it looked like someone's shadow. I could make out a head, shoulders, where the arms would be, and the legs. It was proportioned like a tall human would be, but it was a shadow. No gaps where the armpits or center lines for the legs. A standing shadow. The main body type was black, with a TV-like fuzz effect through it, like on older TVs. Around its full outline, I can only describe as static electricity, not shooting out everywhere away, but arcing around it. I didn't believe it for a second. I noticed that everything else looked so normal, so I wasn't having a heart attack or a seizure. I could see the fence and the dumpster back behind it. It was literally almost in the middle of the washing stall, but more to the front. I was around 20 yards away. I got no bad feelings from it, and I didn't feel sick, just like it was there watching me. The loud vacuum was still running, and I couldn't hear anything coming from it, so I don't know if it made any noise. I acknowledged it in my mind and thought, okay, I'll see you. I was getting my things and about to leave, it never approached or moved, it was just there. I went around the car and grabbed my floor mat on the passenger seat. I have no clue why. I should have just left. I rounded the front of my car with it still there. Sat down, started the car, looked back, and it was gone. I drove off immediately. I don't expect anyone to understand. I just knew it wasn't there to harm me. 
I've had a few strange things happen in the woods, nothing crazy. It really just felt like it was a watcher, was just there to observe. I've searched for other encounters with descriptions like it, but have yet to find one that matches mine. I stayed over at a friend's house when we were both eight years old. I was moving to another part of the country, so it was going to be our last day and night together. I don't remember much of what we did, but I guess it was a pretty normal day. Sometime during the night, I woke up to go to the toilet. I got up carefully so as to not make any noise and opened the bedroom door. In the darkness of the house, I could make out some kind of humanoid shadow walking down the hallway. I rubbed my eyes confused, and when I looked again, it was gone. I went to wake my friend and told her what happened, and after a pause, she confessed to me that she had been feeling the atmosphere in her house strange for a few days. That was the end of it, as her mother had to hear my loud footsteps as I went back into the room and asked for us to go to bed. From time to time, I will write to her and ask her about that night, but she says she doesn't remember anything, not even the strange atmosphere she said there was. This happened to me when I was in my early to mid-teens. My family went out one day for a hike, and I hadn't felt like going, so I just chilled at home. Things were fine for most of the morning, and from memory I think I just potted around the house, cleaning up a bit and watching TV. It was around mid-afternoon when I decided to read a book. I settled down on the kitchen slash dining floor by the glass sliding door that leads to the balcony to soak up the sun while I read. It was enjoyable, nothing seemed out of place at all. I lost track of time, so when I read I couldn't be sure how long I'd been sitting there, when all of a sudden my skin began prickling like crazy. I'd never felt anything so intense, pins and needles just running all over my skin and the hairs on my arms were raised. I realised two things, something was wrong and I wasn't alone. Without thinking I looked up, and for a few seconds that seemed to last a lifetime, I saw the blackish shadow in broad daylight. I almost stopped breathing. It was standing part way in the doorway that led from the kitchen slash dining area out to the lounge room. I clearly remember that it looked male. It was tall, had wildly spiky hair and was lean looking. I couldn't see the thing's face at all, but it was definitely watching me. Then it stepped back and disappeared. My heart hammering, I slowly put the book down and got up and walked over to where I seen this shadow man. There was no indication that it had been there, except for the slightly cold spot in the doorway. Shaky, I went back to where I'd been sitting in the sun reading my book, and I stayed there until my entire family came home. I didn't tell any of them what had happened, and it wasn't until quite a few years later that I told my little sister what I had seen in our parents' house. Then she related a story that was similar to mine. A shadow had formed on the wall around the same area that I had just seen it, just past the doorway to the lounge room. She said it had stayed for a few moments before completely disappearing, and she'd also been alone at the time. I never asked my older brother, if he'd experienced anything, but the two younger siblings and I were sure there was something in that house. All three of us at one time or another had experienced the sound of someone walking around in the dead of night. The sound would start out of nowhere, three slow dragging steps that would go from the kitchen to the lounge room and then stop. It could have been the shadow man, or maybe it was something else. I never saw the Shadow Man again while I lived there, but I'll never forget it. My whole life, I have experienced paranormal activity. It happens, and I move on, until my senior year of high school. I was taught to respect the dead, so I've never gone ghost hunting or tried to mess around with spirits of the sort. Each to their own, though. Senior year, I was given an assignment to find ancestors in town and see how far back I could find my relatives. 
My grandmother told me and my cousin, a junior at the time, about an old cemetery that she believed a cousin was buried in and how to get there. So we go and find her grave and gather the information. We thank her for allowing us to go to her tombstone and to rest in peace. The whole time we were there, my cousin and I felt very off, like we were being watched and not in a good way. We return and everything's fine, until I go to bed and have the same feeling. I'm laying in bed, staring out the door into the hallway, and feel as if someone is there watching me. This continues for months. I thought it was because I was the only one who noticed it, until my brother, ten at the time, started asking me if he can sleep in my room with me because he's scared of the hallway. He told me he felt as if someone was watching him from the hallway and it felt bad. I agreed that it was not a pleasant energy. This was a dark, eerie feeling, and I told him that it would be fine, and we both laid in my bed and stared at the hallway and felt eyes on us. We both said the Lord's Prayer and went to bed. We're not super religious, but me and my brother felt at that moment we needed to say it. I graduated high school, and things calmed down. The feelings seemed to go away, until that morning. My mum went to work and my brother went to school, and I got up, got into the shower, and just as I was washing my hair, a heavy feeling crashed down on me, and I felt again like I was being watched. I turned my head and looked to the side, and there, on the other side, of the distorted glass shower door was a tall, dark figure. I could see the head and the shoulders, but no other features except red eyes. I screamed and threw the shower door open and it was quickly gone. I got dressed, got the shampoo out of my hair, and left the house straight for my grandmother's and told her while bawling. She looked as scared as I did. My grandmother believes it was a shadow person, me and my mother had been fighting a lot, a full-blown screaming match, which we never did before the trip to the cemetery. Grandma called my mum, and they called someone to cleanse our house. I never went back. I moved out. My mum sold the house, and I still get horrible feelings when I drive by it. This is the worst paranormal experience, but I have years of stories. I'm currently 29, and there are a lot of them. Just be careful where you go and what you bring home. This happened a number of years ago, when I spent a day with my friends Jamie, Brittany, and Muriel. After hanging out, we decided to cap it off by watching a movie in the theater. As the film came to an end, Jamie received a call from her mum, who sounded deeply spooked. She explained that something was in their house, and that both she and Jamie's sister, Ariel, were unsettled. Urgently, she asked for us to come over. We left the theatre and hurried to Jamie's house. Upon arrival, a strange vibe hung in the air. Not just me, but Jamie, Brittany and Muriel all sensed something was off. Jamie's mother recounted their unnerving experience. She and Ariel were in the master bedroom when their dog, Sammy, began barking at an unseen threat. Despite their efforts to calm him, Sammy fixated on a spot on the wall, where a bizarre sequence unfolded. A shadow materialized and glided up the wall, entering the bathroom. Simultaneously, a secured curtain shot up with a bang, accompanied by a whirring sound. Concerned, they fled upstairs, prompting Jamie's mum to call for support. Perplexed and anxious, we formed a circle and began praying. Jamie's mum instructed us not to open our eyes until we were done but my curiosity got the better of me. I peeked and regretted it immediately, as in the living room corner, I saw what I believed to be a shadow figure. Terrified, I shut my eyes and intensified my prayers. Miraculously, the oppressive air lifted, leaving us all feeling lighter. Assuming the worst was over, we gathered on the front porch to ease tension. After a few minutes, Sammy, who had been calm, suddenly went berserk, sprinting down the driveway. I saw the same dark figure seemingly gliding or floating down it, pursued by Sammy. Abruptly, it shot up and vanished. Sammy returned nonchalantly as if nothing had transpired. 
but the memory of that enigmatic figure still lingers, haunting the recesses of my memory, and I'm certain of its nature or fate, but the encounter remains etched in my mind. When I started dating my wife, I was 15, and her stepdad gave me this rock that had a dragon carved into it. It was cool, actually, and was heavy. I took it home and placed it in my room, inside my entertainment center. As time went by, it became difficult to get a good night's sleep. I would wake up constantly and have trouble getting back to sleep. During this time, I had increasingly suicidal thoughts. I started withdrawing myself from my family, and I was sitting outside on the phone, and I was peering through the window to keep an eye on my nephew who was sleeping on the couch, when all of a sudden a small dark shadow about four feet tall went from one room to my room. I immediately got chills and was too afraid to go back inside. Another time I was asleep in my room, and I woke up to this same shadow standing over me. I couldn't move and say anything, and the moment I began praying, it descended into the bed, and I was able to move once more. I got up and ran out of the room, and fell asleep on the couch. One day, I was watching a program about hauntings, and they had mentioned how a demon could attach itself to a doll. That's when it clicked on me, that everything had started once I got that dragon rock from my girlfriend's stepdad. I opened the entertainment center and it was gone. I looked everywhere for it but could never find it, but since it disappeared everything stopped, and I was myself again, and there were no more shadow people at night or night terrors. There is one small note, and I'm not sure if it's related, but during this time I developed type 2 diabetes, and I always wondered if it had anything to do with it. A friend and I spent the night at my house both feeling a bit restless, when she suggested we try the Charlie Charlie game. I agreed. We left our seats and went to my room, and prepared everything. With anticipation we began the game, posing questions like, are you here to cause harm? Are you male and female? For over 15 minutes, and watched the pencil move to answer our questions. When the game concluded, we decided to return to the living room, and indulge ourselves in a scary movie. As we were engrossed in the movie, a loud crash from elsewhere in the house startled us. My friend and I paused the movie to investigate the source of the noise, and we found my favorite plant on the floor next to a shattered pot. We retrieved it, and resumed our movie, but then we heard footsteps in the hallway, and got up to explore. And when I turned to the corner, I noticed the bathroom light was on. As I reached to switch it off, the lights began to flicker, and the sink turned on by itself. Alarmed, I called my friend, who rushed to my side in astonishment and asked what was happening. I told her I had no idea. A few hours later, I ventured back to my room and searched for some notebook paper and coloured pencils. When I opened my door, the room was enveloped in darkness, and within that obscurity, I glimpsed a tall, shadow figure. I quickly flicked the light on, and the figure vanished, and as I turned to exit the room, I heard heavy breathing and my name being whispered. An icy breeze sent shivers down my spine, and in sheer terror, I hastily packed my bag. My friend and I left the house for the night. When I returned the following day, the house remained eerily still and silent, and the enigmatic figure never returned. Just as well. In 1994, when I was 11, I had an encounter with something that I can only describe as a shadow person. At the time, I had no idea what it was, ghost, alien, or otherwise. It started one April night, while I was asleep and dreaming. In my dream, I was sitting on a wall looking over the PE field of my school, when a kid that bullied me in real life came up to me punching me in the chest knocking me off the wall. I felt the full physical force of the blow and it woke me, and I woke up screaming at him, my chest hurting from the pain. It's as if my physical body had been hit, and I had the wind knocked out of me. When I woke up, 
I had bolted upright to a sitting position, clutching my chest, trying to breathe. As soon as I looked up across the room, I saw this thing. It looked like a shadowy hooded monk, where its face should have been was just a darker shade of black. It seemed to be folding something in its hands over and over again. I say folding, but it was like he was manipulating a liquid cloth. The fabric flowed back and forth in its hands, and also was black. A bright light shone from behind the creature, and I remember being able to see my posters on the walls behind where it stood. There was no other light in the room, other than what was emanating from it. As soon as I saw it, I was paralyzed, I was trapped in my body. I couldn't move, and now my chest hurt even more, since I couldn't breathe. I don't know how much time passed with me in this state. After a while, I could feel my body begin to come back to me. At first, my toes began twitching, then my fingers and eyelids, and then a rush of sensation came back to me. I was finally able to breathe and move around, and the creature was still there. I had no idea what to do. If I was to run out the room, I would have to push past the thing, as he was very near the entrance, and I did not want it touching me again. I tried talking to it, asking who it was. What did it want? Why did it hit me? I asked him to leave, and everything done was met with no response. He kept looking down to what he was folding in his hands, and would look back up at me every so often like he was making sure I was staying put. Something told me that somehow, this thing had known what I was dreaming, and he had used the dream to attack me and wake me up, or something like that. The longer he stayed there, the more afraid I grew. I tried pinching myself, closing and opening my eyes, but it was still there. I lived in Los Angeles, and this was a few months after the Northridge earthquake. And after having lived through that, I had this fear of being trapped in my room from a quake. So for a long time, I would store supplies near my bed. Bottles of water, saltine crackers, and a flashlight. I kept the flashlight under my pillow. It's hard to describe, but it was like I heard this voice in my head, trying to help me through this encounter. It reminded me about the flashlight, but told me not to let the creature see me get it. I had no idea what I was going to do with the flashlight against this thing, but it was all I had. So I pretended that I thought I was dreaming, and that I was going back to bed. As I laid down, I could see the posture of the shadow creature change. It seemed to become antsy, paying more attention to me, but it would not stop folding the liquid cloth. I grabbed the flashlight, cracked open my eyes to make sure it was still there, and sat up and turned it on and shone it at it. The voice told me to shine it where its heart would be, if it had one. And as soon as the light hit the creature, it imploded into nothingness. I could see a spiral of darkness of light for a few seconds and it was gone. The next morning I had a bruise on my chest where I had been hit. I never saw this strange creature again. I've had a couple of experiences in my life that I wonder if it was tied to it, but I can't be sure. Fast forward now, 25 years later. I'm married with two beautiful children. My first child, my son, seems to have a bit of a twinkle when it comes to these energies. He's predicted a few things before they happen, but has shared a few dreams with me. He's been showing signs of this stuff since he was first learning to speak. But his little sister does not seem to be able to grasp it. Until now. A few months ago, my five-year-old daughter began to tell me about dreams she was having and she saw a shadow man. In her first dream, she had woken up to use the bathroom and when she finished using the toilet, she opened the door of the bathroom to leave and saw him on the other side of the door. The shadow man chased her, trying to grab her and ended up biting her on the finger. She had a number of dreams about the shadow man chasing her for the past few months. She says that she has somehow turned her good dreams into bad dreams and is now afraid of him. I have never told her or my son about my encounter with a shadow person. With this story, she has told me about her shadow man. She has made it very clear that she's only ever seen him when she's asleep and dreaming. 
until today. She was at her preschool having a snack, and she was standing by a table where her snacks and milk were, and she looked up, out of the entrance to her classroom, where she saw the shadow man from her dreams outside the doorway to the classroom. It scared her so badly, she knocked over her milk box and tried to point it out to her classmates, but no one else saw him. She says the shadow man ran away when he saw she could see him. I don't know what to do. My husband, even though he's a believer in paranormal possibilities, thinks it's just an overactive imagination. He's not saying she's lying, but thinks she didn't really see what she thinks she saw. The way she speaks to me about the shadow man and the detail in which she shares her dreams give me chills. It reminds me so much of what I encountered as a kid. I don't want my daughter to be scared of this thing, and I don't want her dreaming about it either. But I don't think telling her something like, it's not real, is going to help. I also don't think that telling her it's real is going to help either. I remember my parents not believing me after my experience and that hurt. They would tell me to not just be silly or dramatic, even though they knew what happened to me was real, and I was terrified of it. Whatever it is, I don't think she's lying, and it's definitely real to her. And if it's paranormal, what the hell is it? Could it be the same thing that attacked me? Is it coming after my kid? Why? Fort Pickens is supposedly a very haunted location. It served under different flags, including the Spanish, Confederate, and now American. There may be more, but that's not the point. The point is that this place has seen a lot of death between battles and hurricanes, which has led to its haunted reputation. I don't know how much I believe in this story, even if I'm the one it directly happened to, but I'll share it, because somewhere inside me I have the nagging feeling that deep down, I know it was real. My friends and I were about 13, and we were exploring the fort, and we'd come upon these small tunnels that lead to old storage areas. Now you have to understand that I was only really friends with two of the four kids there. The other two were my friends, but are no longer. This is important, because it contributed to me questioning the event. I decided to be brave and said I would go down one of the tunnels while someone else went down the other. I go down about halfway without feeling anything, just thinking, hell yeah, I'm thinking I'm so cool. Yeah, I was, and still am very insecure about myself. I hit the halfway mark, and it suddenly felt like I'd hit a brick wall. It's so strange to describe, it was like an invisible barrier was stopping me that only my body, but not my eyes, could sense. Standing there, I began to feel very fearful. Like the longer I stood there, the worse things would get. Then I saw it. A shadow figure sitting on the ground, leaning against the wall as if injured, looking back on it. I didn't get any threatening feelings from the figure, which makes me think it could have been residual energy, like someone hiding away from intruders, as they were bleeding out. I screamed. I think only because that's what I felt I had to do in this situation. That was the proper response. To scream and run. Even though I didn't feel threatened or truly scared, mostly just anxious. When I emerged from the tunnel, my friends were asking what happened. When I told them, I swear I could feel their disbelief radiating off them, like a poisonous gas that sickened my stomach. I never really felt accepted in the group after that. Perhaps it's for the best. Better no company than in bad company, am I right? A local legend from a small town in Mexico. It's a story that parents tell kids in order for them not to stay up late. There was a man in all black, like a shadow. Everything he rides is black, his car, his horse, etc. He'll walk up to your window around 2 or 3 a.m. And if you're still up and look at him, he'll come inside and take you. But if you don't look at him and pretend to be asleep, he will eventually give up and walk away. I experienced this 
and I woke up to pee and went back to bed, and then I heard rocks shifting around as if someone was walking. I didn't think much of it, till I heard it get closer to my window. Twigs snapping, grass crunching, rocks moving. I got under my covers and pretended to be asleep. I heard him grab the bars at my window and tap. I could hear him breathe. I didn't move a muscle. I don't know how long I pretended before I actually fell asleep again, and I don't know if my cousins were playing a prank or not, because the door makes a lot of noise if it's opened. Thankfully, this only happens in small towns. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I do hope you sincerely enjoyed tonight's spooky stories. If you did, please let me know down below. I'd like to extend a huge thank you, as always, to my members and patrons, whose financial contributions make a world of difference when it comes to making these videos. So, thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you'd like an occasional reward, now and then an extra bonus content, follow the links down in the description if you are so inclined. But for now... A few more links to extra stories can be found on screen. Hopefully see you there, and I'll see you all in the next one.